By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. On today's show, I sit down with my friend and fellow sex educator, Elle Chase, to talk about Tumblr's ban on adult content. And I'm taking your calls and answering emails. Topics include how to talk to a partner, casual or serious, about what you want in the bedroom. Why you should never trick your partner in bed, even if it's for their pleasure. Ways to figure out how to go down on your partner, because hey, everyone likes something different. And what to do when you're fresh out of places to get busy. All this and more. Thanks for listening. into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, check out sexwithemily.com. You can also find the podcast and subscribe. We love when you guys subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen. It totally helps the show. And you know they're everywhere now. Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio. Check me out on SiriusXM Radio Stars Channel 109. I am there Monday through Friday. 5 to 7 Pacific, 8 to 10 East, you guys. This has been such an exciting time in my life. I'm loving it. It's literally 10 hours a week answering your calls. So um, it's amazing. If you want a free 30-day trial and you don't have serious, it's sexwithemily.com slash SXM or you guys, I don't care, call in. 888-947-8277. Even if you don't have serious, call me. I'm there for you. This podcast, I hope you enjoy it. It's some of my favorite moments from my week on Sirius. I think you're going to love it. And find me on all social media. It's at Sex with Emily across the board. Sex educator, sex pioneer, Elle Chase is here. And she's the author of Curvy Girl Sex. And she's the creator of Lady Cheeky, which is what we're actually here to talk about. If you haven't heard of Lady Cheeky, it's a site that my friend Elle created on Tumblr, Tumblr is known for its porn sites that are actually geared towards women, what women find hot, what women find sexy. Elle has been responsible for so many goddamn amazing orgasms for women and for men. Like she has figured out what a lot of women find hot and, and sexy. It's a really important site. Um, for I mean, it is important. L, what yeah. you've done. It's an it's an important site. Now, Tumblr, there's a whole thing going on with Tumblr. It's been all over the news. They're shutting it down adult content now yeah. on Tumblr. Yeah, they are. Um, on December 17th, there will no longer be allowed any sort of adult content whatsoever. And no female presenting nipples either, for some reason. No that's nipples. How, that's how female presenting nipples. Um, at any rate, I started LadyCheeky.com years ago. I had left a sexless marriage, and I didn't know what I wanted sexually. Someone I was seeing sent me Tumblr links, and I found what turned me on by looking at other curated pages of um, of erotic photos. You know, sure, you can find hardcore porn anywhere, and Tumblr is no different. But um, there is also it's also a fantastic space to be able to curate pictures that speak to yourself, to your own sense of sensuality. So I found that, and I started reblogging them on my site. And eight years later, I have over mm. two hundred thousand. Tumblr followers alone, and I get letters all the time from women that say, thank you so much 
for having Lady Cheeky because I can look at it with my partner. I can look yeah. at it alone, get aroused. I found out what I, I gear myself toward, what I like, because it's all different kinds of things. It's very female pleasure centric. It is. And you guys, and this isn't just little a thing. She's got 200,000 followers, but millions of hits a month. And Cosmo yeah. voted it. Cosmo Magazine voted the top porn top site porn for women. For, sorry, for women. Right. And, and so and it really is, you guys. Like, I go there and like I'll send things to my guy. I'll be like, hey, this is hot. This is hot. Like, she just knows and she, she curates it. And it's, it's, it's a very like provocative, evocative site. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I want. How the hell did Elle know? So <laughs> let's go back to something for a moment. Yeah. What you said, because now I'm thinking about all the listeners. So you've been sitting here. Elle lives in L.A. She's here with me in the studio. And you've been listening to the last few callers. Mm-hmm. Married for 20 years, Mm -hmm. sexless, Mm -hmm. mismatched sex drives. How do we get that spark pack? What do we do? And also talking to women about what turns them on. And you were in a similar situation. I was in a similar situation. I mean, I, I think when it comes down to sex, there's a reason why you're not having sex anymore. Um whatever kind of sex you were having in the beginning of your relationship, that's, that you can recapture. From the women I've spoken to as a sex educator and as a curator of pornography, um, you know, women do have a innate need. Most women have an innate need to express themselves sexually. And they have been sort of we've been as women sort of put in the back corner when it comes to our sexuality we're taught that we shouldn't present so sexually because that's slutty and if we uh don't present sexually then we're frigid Mm -hmm. so it's it's a complicated world to be in as a woman who wants to own her sexuality or find out what she likes sexually i mean it's really complicated so i was the interesting thing i was thinking is that you were married 20 years it didn't work out and then you're like okay i want to find what turned myself on so like when so many women are calling like I don't know or men like I'm trying to help my wife where would you suggest people start like what 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 first turned you on like what was it about when you were on Tumblr and then led you do you remember what it yeah. was yeah it was a very sensual photo of connection between two people like you know when you're looking at something and you can feel what they're feeling yeah and it's it's I don't know why it's the photographer, it's the people in the photo, but you can actually feel. It's not just acting. You can feel something in there. And these people are having a sensual experience. Yeah, and that's what all of the images have done. I I get it. So that's what it was. And then in your own, and then how would you, how did that help your actual sex life? Like when explain to people to look at images, because I'm always saying, find what really speaks to you, what really turned you on. Well, and then what would that do? Because then you went on to have other, other lovers. and. Well, I was interested because I'd never had enjoyable sex before, ever, not even in my marriage. And so there was something inside me that was like, I've got to have passion. And so I would scroll through these pictures and the ones that were attractive to me were these sensual ones yeah. where there's a really good connection and a passion. Like that kind of passion that you just want to touch somebody. Like there is a a gif on my site, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. It's the sexiest thing I've ever seen in my life. It is a woman sitting down and her partner comes up behind her and starts kissing her neck Uh, and it is I already feel yeah I know like I'm already (laughs) ready to go so um and there's no nudity there's there's nothing it's just this sensual experience and you see how much she's enjoying it and what's going through her mind you can almost read what's going through her mind as he's as he is devouring her neck and he wasn't like going at it like you know like a lion to right. you know meat or anything but it was that sensual kissing sensual touching kissing. that that is and then why do you think like it's so hard like because you're right I think a lot of us in the room here people listening we can relate to that like God, yeah. you know and I think we even had a meme like on our Instagram like you know if you kiss my neck I'm not responsible for what yeah. comes next mm-hmm. and it's just that's what it reminds me of it's like but why it's, it's so hard to explain because I because you said you started saying it's very smart when every woman wants to be sexual but we're have such confusing messages but we just I want to unleash yes. them into this. Like, Why can't we would explain it to our partner? Well, I think everyone really wants to feel desired. 
I mean, really think about that. Even in a non-sexual way, think about being desired. You go to work, in a way, you want to be desired. You want people to to, to react to you favorably and be, and you know, that's people with charisma are desired. When you're with your significant other or your one night stand or whatever, desire is is the driving force between the two of you. And so if you can get that desire back somehow, um, maybe by looking at porn together and getting aroused, right. um, the arousal process, I think, is very, very important. Exactly. Let's talk more about that. Like yeah. that process that we get. And also for men and women, we get turned on very, very differently. Yes. There are... Uh, I think that I think that arousal is not given its due uh, enough because especially with the phone calls that were coming in, like I felt awful for these people calling in. But if you break it down into their elements, I think that giving yourself time to get aroused, talking to your partner about just the arousal process. Like, can we just work on arousing each other? We don't have to have sex, but just touching each other in a desirous way or making me feel desired. I can make you feel desired. How does that happen? Exactly. Because that, from that will come sex. I mean, sex takes no time at all. It's, you know, six minutes. It's, yeah, (laughs) there you go. Like, there you go. But the arousal is the part, the kissing, the making out, the touching, the foreplay, all that stuff that goes so early on. And the enjoyment. I mean, you know, want to know why uh, most heterosexual men like to watch blowjob videos is because the actresses in those videos are acting like they are really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And that's they, you know, of course, because we all want to please our partners. It's right. hard to understand sometimes, but that's what really gives them pleasure. Exactly. So let's talk about that. And so what Tumblr, what Lady Cheeky mm-hmm. di- does, and so everyone should, should check it out, ladycheeky.com. And Before it goes up, away. <laughs> Before it goes away and sign up for her mailing list because yeah. it's not going away forever. Not like going away forever. It has to go, but it has to be somewhere because because I want to explain to you because I, I always send people there. Like, what is the difference? Like, I've never seen that. The Between... Lady cheeky and like mainstream porn, like that, because because when they're, when you're saying they love the blowjobs, mm-hmm. that's because their partner seems looks looking turned on. So when women are looking at that, we're seeing our partners desirous of it's a yes. similar thing that we wouldn't see if we turned on Pornhub. I right. wouldn't see it. I would right. see a woman really enjoying a blowjob. Right. I think um, well because mainstream porn is is so out there and is so available um, on different sites for free. Uh, that is what most heterosexual men go to and it's it's not real desire most of the time it's actors these are professionals they're in in certain positions that are for the camera this isn't real life and so what tumblr lets you do is find porn that you see yourself in yeah so i will post porn sometimes of people i try and do it as often as possible with "Quote unquote imperfect bodies." Right. Um, I will also all post body types and shapes. all body ta- types, Heart. all shapes and sizes, um, all different abilities. I mean, if I could find more beautiful disability porn, I would I, because there are some really hot yeah. pictures, and everyone should be able to see themselves in the sexuality that they want to inhabit. Well, this is what's so sad about Tumblr now with their new with their new laws in place, that their their new regulations starting mm-hmm. December seventeenth, like. Tumblr really is one of the only places where people can find porn for them. Yes. For it's, everyone. It's true. But because it's a social media. The social media aspect of it's really important. Because just like Twitter, you can repost things and you can do all of those. You know, you can have a community. Um, Tumblr's social media uh, portion of their platform uh, it lets people take from your curated site and maybe curate their own. Maybe they want to put pictures of themselves on. Um, Maybe they want to investigate something that they think is taboo. This is a great place for it. These are all things that we could do on Tumblr. And we it was an easy platform. You didn't need to know anything about the computer, barely. (laughs) And um, there's just something for everybody. And you can make your own site that has a little bit of whatever your taste is. Right. Yeah, it's um, really going to be missed. So now you think that, I mean, because I also know we get this on our Facebook page, on our um, Instagram. Uh, I mean, Instagram, like, yeah, and Facebook. But it seems like, and we, the standards have been getting a lot, you know, tighter lately and more regulated. Like, we'll get oh, posts taken down that are ridiculous, like Facebook. Like, so, yeah. So, but it seemed like, um, 
that Tumblr is like, you know, the only platform that it was acceptable. It's well, you're absolutely right. I mean, Facebook just said that you can't even have sexual uh, words having to do with anything to do with sex that would even smell of something that was solicitation. Yeah. So as a sex educator, if I want to have a class uh, on consent in schools and it says sex under- educator under my name, I doubt that that would even... I can't advertise my classes. Right, we can't advertise sex with Emily on no. Facebook. And it's it's a real shame. It's a real shame. And I think this happened after SESTA-FOSTA was, was passed, uh, the anti-trafficking uh, law that's just written so poorly. Right, exactly. Um, that it really throws the baby out with the bathwater. It makes me feel like... Tumblr, I mean, there are smart people, smarter than you and me, that can figure out the whole computer thing. And I find it very hard to believe that you can't find an algorithm that is going um, going to be able to suss out the harmful right. porn, like the child was, they porn. They say it was but for child pornography. Child porn, which is horrible. Tra- yeah, yes. of course they should take that down. But they were saying now they have to just wipe all yeah. nudity. And then it's saying, that, yeah, the alg- they can't really find the right, right. ways to the right. algorithms. And yeah. so they're just like, oh, that was a chicken, not a naked body. Yes. Oops, we took that down. Sorry about that. I mean, I've posted things on Instagram that are completely safe for work and they've taken it down. Oh, yeah, that happened to us too. We posted yeah. something on Facebook that mm-hmm. last year we posted it. Yeah. And this year we reposted it. It was it was a blog that it it was about uh, g- sexy gadgets for guys. So basically a gift guide for, you know, penises and prostates. And mm-hmm. I we had reposted we had added some things to the list, reposted it, updated it, and but we had changed the title from sexy gadgets for guys to sexy gadgets for penises and prostates just to be a little bit more inclusive in that. And a I posted it and it was fine. And then I refreshed the page like a few minutes later and it was gone. And I was like, where did it go? Yeah. So I changed the title back and I reposted it and refreshed. And then both posts were there. <laughs> yeah. And then I was That's like, her. okay. Yeah, so what's going on? I mean, I just thought. It's freedom of speech. I know. And also, I... it's sex is a part of life. So is a penis and a prostate. It's not like you're calling it a cock. It's not like you're calling it a ball sack. It's not like anything that can be um, construed as slang. Right. These are actual anatomical body parts. Yeah, I mean, parts. I just thought in 2019, we would be, you know, here I am on SiriusXM getting to talk about yeah. sex every night. Thank God for SiriusXM. So, yes. and everyone, you know, you could still follow El. El, here's my question for you. After yeah. eight years of curating one of the most, I mean, congratulations, Thank first you. of all. You have been a pioneer in the space and a lot, of, but the fact that you created, like, just from your own heart loins if you will yeah. <laughs> what felt good to you and it's such a you know success but what do you think you you actually learned about sexuality in the last eight years like maybe it's stuff we can impart to people that are like in this place where they're like i don't know what turns me on or why are we struggling or like what do you what else well, about women well you found, or men too what you think we for need? me it changed it completely changed my life yeah. because i was in the entertainment industry before and i starred lady cheeky and i'm a sex educator now that's all i want to do with my life so it's because I realized how um, how disconnected I was from my sexuality. And what we are doing by taking away sexual content, adult content from Tumblr, is we're telling women, we're telling people who are in marginalized communities, the LGBTQIA communities, that, um, that they don't matter, that their sexuality isn't real, yeah. and, um, and that they shouldn't have a space to... Uh, to express their their healthy sexuality right. yeah. and it makes me sad because it's you know it's it we are 2018 going to 2019 yeah. and you just think by now people would have know. you know figured it out I'm really sorry this is happening so I want Thank everyone you. to go support and check out her site ladycheeky.com but my other question was how do you think you got reconnected like it was porn, but it, masturbation. Like, what were the yes. tools that we I could wasn't learn even from? ever connected? Okay, so you were never connected. I was never connected. And you were. I was going through 40, the motions. 39. I was. I was thirty nine, forty, something okay. like that, and I didn't understand why sex was a big deal. Right. Okay. So, like, so tell me. And then the step was, lady cheeky. But then did you start to masturbate more? You started to. I fa- I started dating somebody long distance, and I started masturbating more, and. Uh, he was sort of telling me about toys and so I got some toys and then I just started since I was so disconnected from my body I just started touching myself 
even the non-sexual places, just yeah. very slowly, just to see how I like to be touched, because yeah. I had no idea. And as I did that, I was like, oh, so the inside of my wrists are really sensitive. Yeah. And then my imagination just started going. And the more I touched my body, the more I just dis- I discovered what pleased me, um, the more I was able to accept it and get more excited about it. Like I was like a teenager. Right. You, it all comes back to you. It so all that's comes the back. Thing, yeah. It's that we're not doing, like earlier when you called in, I think it was Joe, he's like, my wife's sex drive, it's gone. She's 31, mm-hmm. it's gone. And it's like, there is hope. Like that's why I always say to you guys, it takes work, but I'm trying to, I want you guys to understand that like, it's not a stab of fingers. It's not just buying a vibrator. It's not talking dirty for a no. night. It's a process. And you have to want it's to like do once, it. It's like staying yeah. in shape. Yeah. That's what sex is, you guys. It's a whole nother field, like eating healthy, staying in shape, re- your religion, and you go to church every Sunday. Sex is the same if you want it to be healthy. It's something that you have to look at in a healthy way and communicate to yourself what you feel is good without shame and blame and get rid of all that stuff you grew up with or whatever was telling you it was bad because that could be what's keeping you back and really getting into it for yourself and for your partner. Mm-hmm. Like this is a this is a job that you we all have. It's not... People but it's a fun one. It is a fun one. <laughs> not, I'm not a masturbate, okay? Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Um, yeah, this can all be fun stuff. I mean, listen, if you don't have a sex drive, there absolutely, as you know, Emily, can be medication. It could, oh, yeah. be, it could be hormones. It could be many different things. Trauma, sexual abuse could be all those things. But regardless of what it is, you have to be 100% in it to, to want to change yourself. Right. Because no one else, no partner is going to be able to talk you into it. Or if they can, it's not going to be what you want. Right. That's right. And you don't want that. So when people are calling and saying, how do I get my partner to blank? There's no getting There's your no partner. There's no getting. Right. No. I mean, Ellen and I are both, we talk about this stuff. Yeah. I love it. Having a friend here. Yeah. Has sex. We talk about <laughs> sex all the time. And she's here. Yeah. Like you can't get it. It's not. No. And they're not giving you an orgasm either. No. Like you've probably, if they are, it's because you have explained to them what you yes. need. And then they're like giving it because you, you. You, right. you know your body and it, but it, you guys have to work together though it's, that doesn't mean you don't call with your questions because I want to help you facilitate this of course yes, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, yes. we're all here for you yeah. but it's just getting that concept that you it's two of you in a relationship have to want to work on it so what do you say to the people who also are um, my partner just won't he's just shut down he's, he's done down. he never wants sex again you know I hear this yeah. it's like it's hard if someone's just has all this background stuff and they've never looked. Well, if you've done everything that you've been telling people to do, which is have that conversation outside of the bedroom and, you know, make a compliment sandwich. You know, I love when you do this yep. and I love all the things you do for us as a family, as a partner. Um, but I really feel like I want to connect to you more intimately and really, really just be intimate and connect with you. And I feel like for me, that is having sex. Yes. And what can we do that you'll enjoy and right. that will make you comfortable to um, to facilitate that? And we don't have to have sex right away. We can just, we can cuddle. What makes you feel close to me and connected? Well, the, that's why I love Lady Cheeky. And I was just thinking this when you were explaining the kissing scene. Like, mm. I'm like, oh my God, the kissing neck. I'm like, what time are we done here? Yeah. Seven? I want to go look at it. <laughs> Is that, it was interesting because when you're talking, I was like, that's it. It's that. When we think about sex, we think about intercourse. We just do. That's how we were raised. We watched it on TV. Like the penis went into the vagina Mm -hmm. and then there was an explosion Mm -hmm. that wasn't real probably. It all happened. Mm -hmm. But, But it's this foreplay, the teasing, that that's what I learned from your site. And what I get to arouse by is just the way they're touching that sensuality. And that's, and I'm not telling like, if some people are listening, rolling your eyes back, oh yeah, you want flowers and romance. It's not, it's, it's sensuality that feels good to both of you. Yeah. Think about it this way. When you're growing up and you know nothing about any of this and you go to the movies or you go watch TV, any sort of sexual content that you see is is all to drive the story forward and it there's they don't spend any time on on how much foreplay needs to go into it and so sex really is to me at least it's all everything else yeah because the penetrative stuff is like big deal yeah we could like take it i mean honestly some people yeah. women, we take it or leave it like we we don't have orgasm necessarily that way we want the connection of our partner don't get me yes. wrong but if i could do one thing on the planet is it expanding everybody's mind of what you how you think of sex that it's so expansive and mm-hmm. it could be like a great makeout sesh massage yeah. kissing the neck okay we are going to take a quick break and when we come back on to your questions
Okay, we're going to help Victoria, who's 47 in Massachusetts, um, how she can have more open conversations about sex with her partner. All right. Hey, Victoria. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. So here's my question. I, I feel like, first of all, thank you, because I feel like you've totally helped me, like, embrace my sexuality in your um, one big thing that I've learned is basically like, okay, men masturbate all the time and, mm. and women don't. So I'm like, right. hey, if I pleasure more myself more often, there's probably a huge benefit to that. Yeah, Victoria. But, yes. So glad. But, but my question to you is that you, um, I think you do a great job about how to frame conversations Thanks. with your partner about how, about how to be intimate. And um, and I think of myself in my own sort of inability to have those conversations. Mm-hmm. So my question is sort of you know twofold. Um, one is that is this a co- like is that common? Am I like, am I oh. in the minority or the majority? You are in the majority. And- no, no one talks okay. about sex. No one feels comfortable. When I say no one, I'm going to tell you the majority of people do not know how to talk about sex, never talk about it, and are struggling just like you. That's why I have a job. It's hard. Okay. It takes. So it's a skill. That, yeah, that that makes me feel better because I I feel like a lot of times when you are giving advice, you make it sound, you make it sound easy, and you're like, oh duh, but. Um, <laughs> That's so not. No. Uh, yeah, that hasn't been my experience. It gets easier over time, but there are certain things I can help you out with. So what? how can I help you now, Victoria? Like, what are we trying to get across to your partner? So occasionally um, he has challenges with erectile dysfunction, and there are definitely, like, you know, some medical reasons related to that. But I, of course, am always wondering if it's, when he has those issues, if it's you know, if it's if you, it's me, mm-hmm. it, yeah, or if it's or if it's him, right? I'm telling you, it's it's it's. I mean, in in the years I've been doing this. I actually never thought about this. In the 14 years that I've been doing this, I've never had a guy say to me, I can't get an erection because I'm not, my girlfriend keeps doing the things that are wrong or she's not turning me on or my partner. Like, literally never. But I have heard from women probably almost every day or a few times a week saying, is it me? Is it my fault? Because women, were pleasers. We just can't imagine. We're like, what am I doing wrong? Am I not hot? And so, no, I'm telling you, it's not. I'm going to, it's not your, you. <laughs> I'm just going to say it and I've never met you or your partner. But I can help you figure out here. So I promise that that's not what it is. Pretty certain. And you said he's also having medical problems and this has been an issue. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got, you know, high blood pressure. Okay. He's a smoker and, and All things those along things. those lines. Okay. So, yeah. So, so it's, it's just, yeah. it's, but, but it's hard. I have not had, I feel like you've given me more confidence to have this conversation with him Good. about, you know, where he's at in 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 what he needs or you know if this is okay yeah. not okay or, or whatever okay. that conversation is but really sort of the foundation of my question was is like um does everybody else have these conversations or yeah does they nobody sh- have these conversations oh so, about se- no just, nobody has them i'm gonna tell you that most people do not have them and then they suffer and then they make up things in their head that it's their fault or that like it's something else. But I encourage people, I think you should start talking about sex the second you have sex with someone, even before, so you can figure out, you know, if you're both on the same page. But do you want me to help you figure out what to say? So how long have you been with this guy? He's your boyfriend, right? So right now he's my, um, he's my friend with benefits. Okay. Great. Yeah. So it's, yeah, which is, which is great because we do, we are friends. And we are very good friends. And, um, but, you know, we don't, um, definitely being intimate is an, obviously a huge benefit and, and important to us. But I guess even in that, like, friends with benefits piece. Yeah, even. Um, yeah. You know, like, sometimes it's, we have a good relationship where we can sort of, you know, joke around or, you know, talk about it or, okay. you know, um, ahead of time, but it, we don't spend any time sort of reflecting on our sex life. Okay, so let's our experience together. Yeah, well, let's do it. So, Victoria, are you going to see him this weekend? Um, not 
not this weekend. Next okay, weekend. but next week. So here's what you do. When you guys are together... And, and this is the kind of thing that you're not going to talk about after sex or, you know, in the bedroom. But maybe you guys all have dinner if you haven't seen each other in a while. And just say, I, I know we haven't talked about this yet, but we're friends. And I'm loving our benefits part. It's great. But I, I see that you're struggling. You know, I, I want to be able to understand what's going on with you, like with your penis. I know sometimes it's harder for you to keep it going. And... I want you to know that I'm totally like supportive of it and I still love you or I love our thing and I love getting together with you. So I just want to know how I can be there for you. How can I support you in this? Has this happened before? Is there something? Because you could even say like, I worry that it's me because you, you know, we all love that. I'm like, no, babe, it's not you. So I think that's how you do it. Like have a drink, go out for dinner and just say, I, I, this is, you could even say this is awkward. But I feel like if we really want to have friends with good benefits, right? As long as we're friends with benefits, they might as well be good benefits. Like, let's get, let's in practice with him because he is your friend, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so, it, and honestly, like, I mean, I feel like I've learned this from listening to you just for, you know, a little bit. But okay. what you just said, like, oh my God, that's so obvious. And like, <laughs> oh my God, that's like, that's perfect in its simplicity. Yeah. So, so just write it down. Remember it. Just do a practice. I mean, he's going to appreciate it because he probably feels bad that you're not satisfied and now you're not going to be friends with anymore because he's not the guy that you thought. I mean, there's a million things going on. You're going to be the you're going to be the strong one and the brave one to actually bring it up in a loving, supportive way. And then you're going to call me and let me know how it goes. Okay? <laughs> not right then. Hopefully you'll be having hot sex, but you know. <laughs> Let's take an email. All right. Okay. We have Stacy, who's 28 in San Diego, and she writes, Hi, Emily. I've been dating a guy who's 44 for about a year and a few months. We used to have sex all the time, but recently, it's maybe once a week or every other week. I want it every day, and I always initiate. I was super into BDSM before dating him, and I like to try that, but I'm shy to ask. I feel like I've brought this up several times, and I'm constantly bothering him about it. I love him very much, and we have sex. It's amazing. I'm wondering if it's our age difference. Maybe it's because he's super stressed at work or fatigue. I feel super insecure that maybe it's because I put on some weight since we began dating, and now he isn't interested, or he just finally caves because I keep asking. He says he's tired and busy. He still lives with his ex and I can't go over there. And I have my roommates and my two kids that still live with me. So places oh, are hard. Wow. Okay. Stacy. Lots going on. Stacy. Stacy. There's a lot, 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 lot here. You're 28 years old in San Diego. First of all, having sex every day is going to be a lot for many, many people. And remember that in the beginning, you're saying we had sex all the time. Everybody, most people had sex all the time all the time at the beginning of the relationship. That is a condition that is a period of time. We all love it. The honeymoon phase feels amazing. We can't help but have sex all the time. So that changes. So that's not realistic to think we can keep up with the same pace and intensity that we had at the beginning. I doubt that he is not attracted to you. He is older than you. He's in his 40s, you know, 15 years older than you. And there's a lot that could have fatigue, his age. It could have a lot to do with his sex drive. And I'm curious about him living with an ex. You just toss that in at the end. That mm-hmm. he's still living with his ex. Is this an ex that he broke up with when you just started dating? Is it an ex from 20 years ago and they bought a house together and they've shared different... Like, I don't understand that part of it. But I think that you need to talk with him outside of the bedroom, you know, from just exploring and let him know, like, this will what would be really fun for me. And when I say I'm into BDSM, here's what I'm into. And like, because just because you're telling him, like, I want BDSM or I was into it or this or that, he might not get it. Like we're saying, there's a lot of people who are afraid to ask questions. Like, what do you mean by that? A lot of people don't know what that means. They really don't. So I think this is a bigger conversation. It sounds really hectic. You've got roommates and two kids and he's got the thing and where do you go have sex? So... I don't think it's because of your weight. I think that we worry about this stuff all the time. I'm just going to say that I haven't met you, but it feels like there's a lot of other things going on and it's just going to take a conversation, like a real honest, because Stacey, you also have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. 28 years old, you've got kids, you've got a lot going on. I think the honest conversation without playing games from a heartfelt place is going to get you the answers that you need to figure out what to do with this relationship. Yeah, I mean... I, I can't get past I, the, she just threw the X thing at the bottom I here, know the email and it's like maybe if they if it was a really new relationship 
but they've been dating for a year and a few months how are you still living with your ex i know and how do we know that he's not still with the ex that's what i'm saying i'm feeling like she needs to do a little bit of she's got to do some reconnaissance and some real ask those questions that you think you cannot ask Okay, we have Doug, who's also in New York, 48, and he says that he's got some ideas on how the previous caller can get her husband to give her better oral. Ooh, okay. Hey, Doug, you're on Sex with Emily. Okay, so so my neighbor, Carissa, in Connecticut over here, um, <laughs> I got some ideas. You know, I, I, I've been married for quite a while, and prior to me being married with uh, my former wife and anybody else I was with, I was always told that I um, that the oral part of what I've done orally has been phenomenal. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, if I've heard it more than once, that's great. But one of the things that, I mean, I can offer up to Carissa, if she's still listening, yeah. is maybe um, to try and get your husband to um, use his mouth on the outside of, you know, like in, in like the, to stimulate the clitoris. Mm-hmm. And maybe take a couple of fingers inside and rub your G spot at the same time. And that seems to do uh, a lot of good. Yeah. For many uh, women, it it does, Doug. Thanks, Doug. It's true. And you know what? Some women like, yeah, thanks for calling sex with Emily. I appreciate it. Don't worry. We're going to be getting our our happy party on tonight. (laughs) That's a good point though, because here's the thing. I I was assuming that Carissa knew what she kind of wanted and he wasn't paying attention to her, but we did a great show, you guys. If you're on SiriusXM, you can download uh, the shows, listen to them on demand. Was it last night's show, The Kiven Method? I believe so, we, yes. We went deep, you guys. We went down on going down last night in the show. <laughs> and I gave you one of my favorite, new favorite oral sex tips uh, for being performed on a woman that rocked my world. And so I think y'all should just check it out this weekend check it out on the app yeah and i just told my guy about it so we he said the best thing to me too he's just like all right you direct it i'll produce it and i was like that's amazing and i'm gonna use that all the time exactly (laughs) you're like bring it on here's the whole plan and then he makes it happen i love that about him look at us so good i know we should all have the oral that we want (laughs) we should we should we should Mm, yeah lots of tongues slowing it down um maybe fingers maybe not like doug said if you do want fingers, let your partner know. Mm-hmm. They're not going to guess. Because like he said, his previous partner wanted fingers. I know some people don't. They just want clitoral. Mm-hmm. Rubik's cube. Vagina Rubik's cube. is the Rubik's cube. It's funny if you could do the little like up, down, like arrows, you know, like on a video game thing. Exactly. <laughs> the, the cheat codes. Yeah. <laughs> up, For how up, you want down, the message. Like you could right. direct yeah. their tongue. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, just program it into their brain. I guess with the sex robot, you probably could. Could you imagine? kind of like so do you think okay do you think now no now i'm really thinking about this because like most sex robots or whatever it's like people are thinking like oh it's the chick that they make whatever but i know that they do oh there's there's male robots male robots too so would they give them a tongue yeah i think so i don't want a male robot without a tongue i'd rather have a male robot without i used to joke yeah i mean i'm telling you that's (laughs) To That's be honest. <laughs> really good point because we got to cut. Yeah, you're right. I hear what you're saying there. And a tongue would be crucial for a male robot. Absolutely. In fact, I said this. I was interviewed last year about what's going to happen with sex robots, pros and cons. And I had some cons, a lot of cons. But my pro was like, well, I guess you could be like, I want oral for 40 minutes. And you just program your robot. My robot boyfriend's going to go down to me for as long as I want. So I would, my assumption is they have to have some kind of tongue. But would it be like a tongue tongue? Like, how would it? Could Although, you program the tongue? Like, I want a Gene Simmons tongue. <laughs> I think you can do anything you want with these robots. <laughs> they would work kind of like the womanizer, which is one of our favorite toys that actually gets close to oral sex. I mean, you know, that's my favorite. Maybe his tongue would be like a tongue, but then it would have a little womanizer. Like, since it's a robot, it could have that little suction, pleasure air suction on its tongue. How come no one's asking? We should design our own robots. We should. Oh, I know. People keep asking me, like, you probably have a sex robot by now. I'm like, not yet. We have to get one for research. Research purposes, guys. We all do everything here for research. Hmm. Oh, let's take an email because this one, I really I really want you to answer this <laughs> okay, one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I will, I will. Okay, so this is from Jim, who's 63 in New Hampshire. Hi, Emily. With regards to ED due to health issues and the medications I take, I am not so sure I'll ever have an erection again. I was wondering, what is the most lifelike penis dildo I could get and try to secretly insert it to my wife? 
Uh, I would have to warm it up. Otherwise, she'll know immediately. Reading this sounds terrible. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, Jim, I'm glad you recognize that because it doesn't sound so great. Please do not... Do not do this. You don't want to... First of all, she's going to know. She's going to (laughs) know it's not you. Like, I I just... But I love that you're trying so hard here that you really want to please her, but you can't be deceitful. I think you just have to talk to her and say, babe, I love you. You're my wife. I love you. And I'm sorry that I can't perform as much as I want to on you right now. And this way you can say, but I... There's so many other ways that we can please each other. And you could buy a, a dildo with her. And you could use it on her, but I think she's going to have to be on the same page as you. You know, She's going to have to co-sign, is what I'm trying to say, on the dildo plan. You can still have a lot of intimacy without a penis, without just intercourse. Remember, you guys, sex is not just about intercourse. In fact, I think that you could definitely take a poll here of a lot of different women who might tell you that if they didn't have intercourse and they just had the intimacy through touch and massage and oral, they might be fine for a lifetime. Jamie just said she'd pick the robot with a mouth and not a... Mm-hmm. Penis, and definitely. Jamie's twenty five years old. So you know, <laughs> um, I would definitely go back to your doctor, though, Jim. See what you can do. Is there anything to do about your medications and dosage? Depending on what you're on, they can work with you. There's, I mean, ED is not a life sentence. Like there are ways that we've talked a lot about on the show. There's some great stuff at sexwithemily.com about erectile dysfunction and ways that you could get it back. So I would say don't give up though, Jim, because you could get it back, but still be honest with your wife. And I think 63, you've, I'm sure you've been together a while. I think that it might surprise you that perhaps some of the best sex is still yet to come. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I love you all. And thanks to my amazing team, Ken, Sarah, producer, Jamie, and Michael. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. 